able to do this in person, but uh, we're grateful to have this option today and we are so excited to hear our speaker. But we have a few things we would like to uh, do first and we want to start our meeting with an invocation. We'll be led by James Robinson with Spire and we will follow it with the pledge which will be led by John Henley with State Farm Insurance. So James. Thank you, Karen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, creator of all things, we thank you for this day. Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may God let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Mighty God, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Father, on this day at this hour, we pause to give thanks and we pause to honor your, your greatness. We need your spirit. God, we want your spirit. Let your spirit rain down on each of us. We praise your name for who you are, knowing that we are nothing without you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, James. Please join me in the pledge to our flag. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, James, and thank you, John, for your uh, leadership today. Now we can go ahead and get started. And our first uh, uh, announcement is going to be made by Lisa Christopher, who is our membership and marketing consultant. And she is going to do the refer and win for this past quarter, which is from uh, Milo's. So Lisa. Hello everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. I'd like to introduce Taylor Guthins, who's with Milo's and they are providing our referral and win prize for this first quarter. You want to go ahead and tell them what they're going to win? Yes, yeah, so we were so excited to be this first quarter sponsor for the Vestavia Chamber for the Refer and Friend program. Um, this quarter, they're going to win a $250 gift card to Milo's. Um, so we we're so excited about that. And it's been a really big quarter for Milo's as we have just launched nuggets to our menu. Mm -hmm. So the gift card can be used for that or any of our other products. So we'll go ahead and draw the winner. And while we're thinking about it, when the road closes in Cahaba Heights, they're still gonna be open. Yes. So the people who are entered this quarter, this is a lucky group because there's not many. It's Dan Moran with Rocky Ridge Hardware, Jamie Purcell with Lee and Petal, and our own James Robinson who's sitting here <laughs> with, of course, Spire. All right, who's going to win? Dan Moran. Oh. <laughs> All right, and he is the one who gave us the lead for Backyard um, market. market. And so if you have a lead, you let us know, and you'll be up in the drawing for our next prize valued at $250. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. And thank you for being here, Taylor. We appreciate it. Hey, I do want to say one thing to clarify. When Lisa was talking about the road closing in Cahaba Heights, it's only a small section of it that's going to close. None of the road in front of the businesses will be closed. There will be there are detour maps, but the Crosshaven will still be open. So please be sure and support those businesses while this construction's going on. Progress is sometimes painful, but it's gonna be worth it in the long run. So I just wanted to clarify that and tell you to still support those businesses. At this time, I would like to introduce Kelly Botcher with Vestavia Hills United Methodist Church. She also serves on the chamber board as our vice chair of education. And she's going to recognize our partners in education, which is Pazitz Middle School this month. So Kelly, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Karen. Um, as Karen mentioned, this is the time in our luncheon that we recognize our partners in education. And today we have the privilege of honoring Pazitz Middle School. Um, for those of you that may not be familiar with the Partners in Education program, it's a, part, it's a program that was actually born out of leadership Vestavia Hills and was adopted by the Vestavia Hills Chamber in 2001. 
Partners in Education is a program that connects you, our businesses, with our school systems and through um, monetary donations, in-kind services, uh, resources, um, businesses can offer those to our school system and in that way have ongoing or even one-time um, donations which it completely enriches our school system. Um, in return, the partners uh, are recognized in our school's publications and as we'll see today, even in our chamber luncheon for our platinum partners. So we are thrilled to, have, to introduce um, Dr. Pennington with Pazitz Middle School and he will introduce our Platinum Partners in Education. Good afternoon, everybody. You know, they say that a school is only as good as the support and resources of the community. And I think this is definitely the case. Vestavia is so blessed to have the level of community support, parental support, and student support mm -hmm. that we have that makes so much of a difference for everybody in our community. We do have uh, four platinum level partners in education that I would like to recognize today and thank for their con contributions and their support in helping us to operate at the level that we operate each and every day. We have Fulton Dental, Jackson Howard and Watley, Certified Public Accountants, Yanoski Orthodontics, and McDonald's of Estavia with Jamie Black, their owner, and Stephanie Drew, who is their marketing director. And we very much appreciate what they do and everything they do to support us whether it's from uh, academic resources to um, resources to help support the teachers and improve the morale of the school, the climate, things that are very important right now when it comes to COVID-19 and the safety protocols we've had to take. So I think the one thing that's happened due to the pandemic is it's given us a newfound appreciation for the things that not necessarily were taken for granted, but just how busy things can be sometimes and we forget the people that really step up and um, support us in our daily in our daily activities so thank you to all of our platinum level partners in education here at Pazitz middle school kelly i'm not sure if you were finished with that but uh, dr pennington thank you for your leadership that truly is uh makes a difference when you have all of these uh pieces or legs of the stool that work together, it does make a difference in these kids' lives, these students' lives. So we are grateful for you and uh, we're grateful for these businesses and what they have done to also help enable you to make your job maybe a little bit easier. So thank you for being with us today. I would like to now introduce our sponsor for the month of um, I don't, don't even know what month it is from March. We've got to get back to some kind of normalcy. Um, David Serber with Cellular Cells, is an authorized uh, Verizon agent, is the sponsor for the month and he has been a fantastic supporter of the chamber is, uh, for years. So David, we're grateful to have you with us and thank you for all of your partnership. So he's going to tell us a little bit about Verizon right now. Hey, thank you guys. I appreciate it. It's, uh, I was, uh, when I picked March, I was hoping that we would all be together uh, instead of doing the video, but I know everybody's doing the best they can. But thanks uh, to you guys for making the, the chamber still active throughout this uh, weird time that we've all been in. But uh, I'll tell you quickly, I've set my uh, timer, uh, Karen, to 15 minutes as you asked. <laughs> uh, but uh, say yourselves, uh, we... Uh, if you're down in the lower end of 31, we have a store there and we have a store over in Mountain Brook. And uh, we are, uh, we look like Verizon, we act like Verizon, but we're not Verizon. We're a partner of Verizon's. Verizon comes to us when they need help with distribution and uh, taking care of the customers. And nationally, we have over maybe around 700 stores. My interest is in Alabama and the Panhandle in a little corner of Georgia. We have 32 locations that we work out of. Uh, we were, uh, this year we were named Agent of the Year, and I believe we were named the number one uh, that's important to Verizon was because of uh, our RIS scores, is 
taking care of the customers. Uh, we have the highest rate uh, rating of our by our customers about uh, how good we do. And it's weird because I'm not real happy with uh, a, an 80 or no, a, a 88 or 89 percent uh, passing score. But that's what we got and we'll take it and we always want to get better. Um, years past, we've all been together. I've talked a little bit about 5G that's coming up and you've all uh, seen all the 5G commercials. It's, uh, it's, it takes thousands of little antennas to do what that one big tower disguised as a tree has been doing for years. So that's still gonna take a little while longer, and, uh, but you'll notice that some things are getting better on your phones or as far as speed, but that for most of us who still just use it to talk or to maybe Zoom a chamber meeting, <laughs> it should still be doing those things pretty well through your Wi-Fi and your, uh, your 4G bandwidth. Uh, so some of the things we've offered during COVID is we've, uh, uh, we have in-store pickup, we have curb service available. Uh, call in and we have uh, 60 minutes and we'll have your order ready for you and bring it out to your car. Something to keep everybody safe. We uh, would like to tell you that we're batting a thousand on that, but I'd like to be honest and <laughs> set expectations. We're batting about 80, 81% on that. So we're always looking to get better at that as well. But we want to keep you safe and we want to keep our front lines safe. Say so yourselves and the wireless industry was uh, deemed essential during COVID. So we have not stopped working. We have been working the entire time. Uh, we did offer uh, our sales force and employees time to not come to work and elect to stay home uh, early in the pandemic as we tried to understand it better. Uh, and we paid them to stay home. Uh, but so the safety of everybody was a concern of ours, but we still had a job to do. And that was to make sure you guys can stay connected to the people you love and maybe people you only like a little bit. <laughs> uh, something else that we have, uh, business to business. We have a whole team of folks. If you, uh, I've always said there's things you don't want to do and that's go to the dentist. You don't want to necessarily refinance your house uh, and you don't want to go get a new cell phone. And Getting a new cell phone should be something that you want to do, that you're looking forward to doing. And sometimes it's uh, through some small catastrophe that's uh, brought you to our doors. So uh, we want to make that uh, a, a good experience for you and a positive one. Something going on that Verizon that started yesterday is uh, open enrollment on insurance on your phones. So you can call me, uh, you can come by the stores. My phone number is 205, it's my direct number, 807. 8700 and I will get you in touch with someone much smarter than me locally at either Mountain Brook store or Vestavia store uh, who will go over some of the eligibility requirements but it's a good way to get uh, back get that protection you need so when the phone falls you can just be mad and not sad <laughs> and I know that's important to all of us sometimes uh, I've gotten uh, I've seen a lot of tears over the years of these phones it's amazing and mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm gonna, um, I, you know, I don't have too much, you know, the open enrollment, whatever, non-insurance or more syndrome. If that is high, give me a call. Uh, if you, uh, you know, one thing that we really just focus on and that is just trying to be nice, just being kind. Uh, whatever, there's, you know, a, there's no problem too big that we can't figure out how to fix it. So if you need something, that's my alarm. It wasn't 15 minutes, I know. You were worried about that, Karen. <laughs> Uh, but if you need something, come and see us. Uh, we're nice people. We want to, uh, we want to help you out. And that's, uh, that's my time for you today. Uh, thanks again. It's good to see uh, you guys there in the boardroom. And I can't wait to see you all in the room, hopefully uh, in the next 30 to 60 days. David, thank you so much. You're always a delight to have a uh, talk with us and we're grateful for your continued partnership year after year and all you do for um, the chamber and the city. So we're grateful for that. And um, Roger Stewart just said you should have used this method mortgage to refinance your house and you would have been happy. That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> anyway, thank you, David. We, we, we appreciate you. And Thank he does they do a great job down at the store. I've been down there many times and bought many phones down there. So um, I can vouch for that. So thank you. Thank All right. You. At, at this time, I would like to introduce John Henley once more. He's the chair of the chamber board. He's with State Farm Insurance. And he has a couple of announcements to make before we get started. John? 
Absolutely. Thank you, Karen. And thank you everyone for being here today on our Zoom call. I know everyone's excited to hear from our speaker today as I am. I just want to take an opportunity to once again thank our <laughs> chamber champions. Uh, and David, thank you especially for all you do for our community and for being the chamber champion. Uh, but these are the individuals that have really stepped up and are uh, participating with, uh, with the chamber at a higher monetary value and they allow us to do all the programming that we do. And also want to thank all of our trustees as well. Again, they have also committed to assisting our chamber and we are very thankful for their support and continued support in 2021. I also want to uh, recognize our elected officials that are with us today. We have the State View Hills Mayor Ashley Purry on the call with us today, as well as City Councilor George Pierce. And I also want to uh, thank them for their service and for everything they do for our city. Uh, it's a thankless job. We appreciate all they, they do and continue to do in support of the chamber. And I'm also looking forward to that time when we can all get together again, and hopefully that will be sooner rather than later, because we have done more Zoom calls over the last year than I thought I would ever do in my life. So um, thank you again, and thank you everyone for being here today and uh, participating uh, in our uh, monthly Zoom call. Thank you, John. And at this time, I would like to ask James Robinson with Spire, who serves as our programming chair, uh, to introduce our speaker for the day. Again, thank you, Karen. Um, let me uh, start out by thanking all of you for, for joining us today. A special thanks for our speaker. Um, we actually had um, Ms. Russo scheduled for 2020, and we rescheduled for 2021 because we were so excited about hearing from her in person. Well, that didn't quite work out either, so, um, but we're still delighted <clears throat> to have her. When Target purchased SHIP in December of 2017 for $550 million, it was the first time our speaker had ever heard of SHIP. Her first experience with the same day delivery service when she lived in Minnesota was when her sons were home from school during a snow day. The ship order included Doritos, a Mountain Dew, a video game, and an apple. <laughs> the apple was to make her feel better about the Doritos and the Mountain Dew. <laughs> Today's speaker, Kelly Caruso, spent more than two decades with Target before being named CEO of SHIP in 2019. Prior to that, she was president of Target's independent global sourcing business. She has also held positions with Abercrombie and & Fitch and May Advertising. Having lived in, Pen in Pensacola and Georgia as part of her military family, she graduated from high school in Great Falls, Montana, and attended the University of North Dakota. Her first impressions of Birmingham was described by what she called that energy and renaissance going on in the downtown area where ship corporate offices are located. Something you may not know is that in addition to grocery items, SHIP has also added Petco to its, to its marketplace, which provides same day delivery of pet supplies in more than 200 markets. Lastly, our speaker views her role as CEO as a good steward of a team and of the business. As a female CEO, her desire is to pay it forward. She's committed to creating a diverse and inclusive culture at SHIP. Please join me in welcoming SHIP CEO, Kelly Caruso. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for that introduction. I'm going to take just a moment here to pull up my screen so I can share it with you. All right. Can everybody, can everybody see that? All right. Thank you so much again for having me here today. Um, for those of you that might be less familiar with Shift, we are a same day delivery company. Simply put, we bring the store to your door. 
And as said, you know, in the introduction, that, abs that absolutely is a true story on one of my interactions with Shift. But that was actually the second interaction. The first had been on a snowy, um, snowy afternoon or snowy Saturday morning in Minneapolis. And my typical routine for Saturday was meal plan for the week, go out and do the shopping. And as many of you as working parents, you can relate to that type of a Saturday. And so I had heard about shipped, but not tried it. And within two hours of placing my order, I had everything I needed for the week. And instead of spending a couple of hours slogging through snow, snow to do a target run, I made brunch for the family and we sat down and had a new Saturday routine where I got, I got time to spend with two teenage boys and my husband um, that we normally didn't have together. And you know this, that is priceless. And so when the opportunity came to be the CEO of Shipped, there was no question this was going to be an amazing job, an amazing job it has been. So let's talk a little bit about the history of Shift. As many of you are aware, Shift was founded in the summer of 2014, right here in Birmingham, Alabama. It was acquired by Target in December of 2017, but we operate very independently and continue to be headquartered out of Birmingham. Over the last couple of years, the team has done an amazing job of scaling the business. Today, we operate in over 5,000 cities across the United States, covering 80% of households nationwide. We have over 250,000 shoppers on our platform, and over 1,000 shipped employees between our Birmingham and our San Francisco offices. We also have 120 retailers on our marketplace, and that number is growing. As I've said, we are committed to continuing our growth strategy right here in Birmingham. Birmingham is where our roots are. Not only are we head headquartered here, but we continue to grow our workforce in Birmingham. When I started, we had about 600 team members located in Birmingham. Today, that number has grown to 900 and continues to grow. In fact, we needed more space to um, support our ever enlarging team. And so earlier this spring, we moved into new space in downtown Birmingham in a building that was renamed Ship Tower. And I couldn't be more excited to welcome back our teams this fall when we come back together. We also um, have an organization, an initiative, if you will, housed within Shipped called Birmingham Bound. The purpose of Birmingham Bound is to really continue to, to nurture, grow, and support Birmingham's nascent and emerging tech ecosystem. This group really focuses on two things. Number one, recruiting more tech companies to Birmingham. And secondly, ensuring that they continue to nurture and support the existing tech companies. And they do that by focusing on two different things, ensuring that um, there is economic support to these companies, but also access to key leaders in innovation for these, for these companies to continue to learn and grow. And it's been fun to see everything that Birmingham Bound under Brittany Somerville's leadership has accomplished. When I think back to about a year ago right now, I was, I'd been enrolled for about a year. And during that year, I had spent my time focused on three key things. Develop, working with my C-suite to develop a long-term strategy. Starting the work on really articulating our purpose and our values and elevating our C-suite to ensure that it was diverse and represented leaders from all different types of industries and background. Coming out of my February board meeting, I felt like, wow, we have everything that we need to just go get it and continue to grow. And then the pandemic hit. Last year, it was chaos for shift and for many companies here in Birmingham, in fact, for all companies. 
we were grateful to have the opportunity to be a service that provided households all across the US a safe way for them to get their groceries and their household essentials. We were grateful to welcome so many shoppers onto our platform that had been displaced because of the pandemic in their normal jobs. Shift was a flexible and um, a flexible way for them to, to earn income and continue to support their families. We also knew that it was going to be critical though during the, this tough year that we ensure our members and our shoppers were safe. And to do that, there were three things we really doubled down on. Number one, launching new product features so that the deliveries could be way, made in a safe and contactless fashion. Secondly, ensuring that all of our shoppers had access to protective equipment on a daily basis. And last, but most importantly, making sure that they had the our shoppers had the financial assistance necessary to support them if they contracted COVID or if they were nursing a family member who came down with COVID. That cost us tens of millions of dollars in investments in our members and our shoppers, but we would do that all day long. Those are the decisions that we do not question when we make them because it's part of our, our, our purpose and what we value. We are a people-centric company that really values the community of shoppers and members that we are here to support. As a CEO, I often get asked, you know, where do I spend my time and, and what do I prioritize? What's important to me? And for me and, and our business at Shift, it's really three areas. Number one, I focus on ensuring that there is a well-articulated and understood purpose and set of values. Having purpose and values really engages the hearts and the minds of your team. It allows the team a touchstone, if you will, or a lens to look through when making decisions, whether it be business decisions, people decisions, or community decisions. Secondly, it's about focusing on the long-term strategy, making sure that shift is well positioned for continued growth, both top line and bottom line, well into the future, that we have got a differentiated and unique positioning in the market that easily answers the question, why would you choose shift over other options? And lastly, but most importantly, I spend my time developing and nurturing talent. At shift, as in, as is true for any company, we are only as good as our talent. And I gotta tell you, I've got some amazing talent to work with and I am inspired every day that I show up from work to work. I continue to learn from this amazing team. At Shift, our purpose is this, to spark the connections that show how every person counts. We know at Shift that we are so much more than simply a grocery delivery service. We know that when we come together and make sure that our team, our shoppers, and our members really feel like they matter to us and that we understand them, it is a much deeper and richer relationship. For me personally and all of us at Shift, we believe strongly that technology without that human element, it's not relevant to the future. And it's what makes Shift so unique in this industry that we're working in. So having our purpose is important to us. And honestly, it got us through some really tough times last year as a place to go and reground ourselves into not just what we're doing at Shift and how we're doing it, but why we're doing it and why we get out of bed every single morning. When I think about our strategy, the very top, it starts with our purpose. Like I said, that is what guides our decision making. Our aspiration is to develop the most trusted local ecosystem by combining trusted shoppers, valued partners, and an efficient cost to serve. There are three pillars that we really focus on with pillar one and pillar two being where we spend 90% of our time. 
We want to be the most trusted brand in delivery, the one-stop shop for all of our member and our shopper needs. And to do that, it will also be important that we continue to create unparalleled value for our partners and making sure that we expound on the strong relationships that we have with our retail partners. We seek to really ensure that they understand we are a brand extension to their brand. We don't want to be a retailer. We want to enhance their retail experience, be it in-store or online. And lastly, but also important, is we'll continue to innovate and think about the future to ensure that we are expanding into new frontiers, where and however it makes ship sense for shipped and long-term growth. I talk often about the importance of a diverse and inclusive culture. For me, diversity is about a lot of different things. Not only diversity of background, diversity of gender, ethnicity, racial makeup, but also diversity of industry expertise, diversity of worldview. All of that comes together to create much more innovative and um, creative solutions when we are solving our toughest problems. I often say, if the company is looking for, to me for all of the answers, then we're in trouble. There's a lot of things I know, but I certainly don't know everything. And I need to surround myself and each other on my executive team with people who know different things than we know. Because if we all agree and all come from the same background and all have the same perspective, then we don't all need to be there. One of the things I am most proud of is where we are on creating a diverse workforce. We are not done, and I want to start with that. There is still more work to be done. But I'm proud that six of the nine shift executives that sit in my C-suite are women. I'm excited that 40% of the executive team is diverse because we know uh, we have so much more robust conversations because of that diversity. 50% of our leaders at the director level or above are women and 31% in product and tech are women. And that's a tough number to hit based on how few women there are to begin with in those types of industries. During this month of Women's History Month and the day after International Women's Day, these are numbers that I really stand behind and am proud of. And it sets the tone for the future of SHIFT. As I think about that future, we are really focused on four key areas. Continuing to grow. For us, that means continued growth within the US so that we are covering even more households, but also expanding our retail marketplace so that we are pushing well beyond categories like grocery and household essentials to get into things like pets, office supplies, home apparel, alcohol delivery and prescriptions. To do that, we'll need to add more retailers. We'll wanna to continue to enhance our product features to make it an amazing experience, not only for our members, but for our shoppers and our retail partners. And as always, we're going to continue to focus on people. It starts with people at Shipped. Our shoppers are our secret sauce. Shipped placed in early bets on shoppers when we said the power of the personal shopper is what will set us apart. It's why it made sense for SHIP to be founded in a city like Birmingham, Alabama, which is so focused on people and relationships. It's why we grew up through the South and the Midwest and eventually got into the East Coast and the West Coast but it wasn't the first place we started, it was the last place. And again, it was because the power of the personal shopper resonating in these cities across the Midwest and the South. We'll continue to diversify our teams and we'll continue to activate our purpose. What I'm really excited about as I think about 2021 is this, we are coming out of a year that was grounded in so much chaos and crisis. And as I reflect on what shipped and the entire team was able to pull off, I could not be more proud. 
but I'm excited to lift our heads and really get back to strategically running the business, continuing to have a strong impact socially um, and economically in the communities in which we operate and continue to have SHIP be a great opportunity to develop a career and earn flexible income, whether you are a team member of SHIP or whether you are a shopper on our platform. So with that, I thought that I would open it up for questions. All right, this is an oppor a golden opportunity for anybody that has a question that they would like to ask Ms. Caruso. If you'll sh put it in the um, Q&A or chat, we'll uh, be sure and get that to her. So uh, I'll ask one uh, right off. How has your family adjusted to the South? Is oh that like Birmingham? Yeah. They love it. So um, great. Thank you for that question. You know, when Target said, hey, do you want to go be the CEO of Shipt? It was, yeah, I definitely want to go be the CEO of Shipt. But I have to say, the idea of moving to Alabama when we lived in Minneapolis for over 20 years um, gave me pause. I did not know anything about Alabama and my husband had a job he loved and my son was um, going to be a rising junior in high school. Okay. And so when we came to Birmingham and visited, you could just feel the energy and the excitement the minute we got here. And it has been a great experience. I often say it and I know, I know everybody says it, but it's true. Southern hospitality is, is a thing. Um, we often talk in Minnesota about Minnesota nice. And what that means is we're stoic and we're introverted and we will help you with anything you need and give you directions, any place you need to go, just not into our homes or into our lives. <laughs> that is not true for the South. And people wrapped us in a warm hug to make sure that that every member of my family felt supportive and my youngest my so hogan who who made the move with us my oldest is in college my youngest he's never leaving he loves it here he's going to alabama next year and when when i ask like what's keeping you here it, he'll easily say the people the food and the weather and he'll say my my question is that why i'm staying here my question is why would anybody leave so it's been good well, that's uh, nice to hear. Okay, I have several questions that have come in. The first one is, uh, what were your 2020 uh, growth in sales? What percent uh, did you grow? I'm sure the pandemic was not anything anybody wanted to experience, but I can't imagine that didn't really uh, accelerate your, your growth. It did, it did. And while we don't um, share our financial results of being a subsidiary of Target, what we do, what I would say is our top line growth was three to five years ahead of where we had anticipated. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing to also keep in mind, point to point delivery is not profitable for anybody in this space. And if you look at some um, companies similar to ours, like a Grubhub or a DoorDash, you can see their, now that they are public companies, you can see their financials. And those are examples of companies that don't make money. And so while top line was really good, we did not have those three to five years to really shore up our operating platform. And it was like, it was tough underneath that. Um, I'm excited by what the team was able to accomplish. And I'm excited for how much further we are now along in that operating model. There's still work to be done, but we had a lot of great learnings that we are taking away from in the year 2020 and able to agilely and quickly apply them to the business. Yeah, that's, that's great. In fact, I have a question along that line. Do you ever see ship getting into other delivery spaces, hot food from restaurants, dry goods, et cetera? So yeah. sort of that same line. So I'm a big believer that when you set out a strategy, it is equally important to not only state and be clear on where you will play and how you will win, but to also be clear about where you won't play. And as we did our strategy development at the back half of 2019, 
we were very clear on both of those things. And um, the decisions we made were this, there's plenty of growth opportunities for us right here in the US. And so for now, we will continue our growth in the United States. We also recognize that there is, we believe there is not a pathway to profitability when you are doing point to point delivery on things like hot food. And it's tough to bundle a bunch of deliveries on hot food together because that customer experience is not good. And so we will not get into hot food or prepared foods from restaurants because it's um, the profit's not there. The unit economics do not make sense. What we do want to do and feel like we've got the right to win because of our shoppers is to get into categories beyond just grocery and household goods. And you've seen us go into those. As I mentioned, pet, office supplies, um, baby, general merchandisers, not just like Target, but Meyer also. And our right to win is this. Our shoppers, they know how to shop and they understand what, why you might want something and what it's really for. Um, they are strong communicators. They develop great relationships with their um, members, their customers. And we're really choosy about what shoppers we allow on to, to our part platform. Out of 10 app applicants, um, we accept three. So all of that really positions us well to go into more and more categories and be a one-stop shop for our members. Well, that's a good segue into the next question. What's the average number of hours uh, ship, ship shoppers work each week? Yeah, that's a, it's a wide range. Um, I believe right now it is um, close to 10 hours a week. Typically, these are not their main job. They are working other jobs. Too. This is a way to earn flexible income on their schedule when it works for them and income that they use to you know, pursue their dreams, um, pay for college, pay for a wedding, pay for a vacation when and if we, you know, when we can go on vacations again. And so it is um, that type of, of a, a job. Okay. All right. Uh, next question I have is what's the average grocery store order dollar amount? You know, that, um, depends on the retailer and there's a, again a wide you know what we're what what that looks like from party city looks different than what it might look like from a Publix looks different than from a target generally speaking it is right around the um 90 dollars give or take we certainly saw a spike up in that um we call it aov average order value we saw a spike up in the early months of the pandemic as um, members were doing what we call pantry loads and really uh, loading up. Um, but as time's gone on and there's more of a normal cycle of grocery shopping, um, we've seen that number come back down to still a little bit higher than pre-pandemic, but closer to the range. There you go. Okay. And uh, question is, uh, does SHIP support nonprofits in the area? We do. We, um, Feeding America is one of our biggest national nonprofits. Um, we continue to support nonprofits and have a robust giving here in Birmingham as our headquarters. What I want to see us do is continue to support the communities that we operate in, both locally and nationally, because we are a national company and do it through, um, again, the lens of our purpose and, and what matters most to us. Food insecurity is a big part of that. Um, sometimes we, our donations are um, monetary donations, but often they're also in-kind services. And I'll use this as an example. Um, last summer, when the riots and the protests over the murder of George Floyd broke out in Minneapolis, there was um, parts of Minneapolis quickly became a food desert because of how many stores were um, temporarily shut down. They just couldn't serve the community. 
there was a local um, market, if you will, international market that really catered to the diversity of ethnic, um, ethnic groups that lived in the area. But they are small mom and pop shops that, you know, don't always have the technology or the infrastructure in place to work with the same day delivery service. And so we went in and were very hands on and helped them come up with alternate solutions so that they could have access to a delivery service like shift for their communities. And there is a heavy lift that comes with that on ships part, but it is so important to creating healthy communities. And that is an example of how do we do more ideas and innovation like that, that serves communities in a way that best serves communities throughout the US. So it's important to us and an area that we will continue to develop and evolve. That's great. That's a great partnership and very, uh, like you said, establishing community. I have a couple of other questions. I think we're still okay on time if you're okay. Um, one is, is there a partnership with Birmingham Bound and Innovation Depot? Um, yes, Birmingham Bound and Innovation Depot, along with all of the different um, uh, organizations located in Birmingham to support the development and growth of the tech ecosystem, they all work very closely together and very collaboratively. So yes. Perfect. And let's see, uh, what are your thoughts on raising the minimum wage and what potential impact would that have on your growth? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that goes into a conversation about raising minimum wage and um, there isn't a, a, a silver bullet that applies to every situation. So while I don't have that answer, here's what I will tell you. At Shipped, we are committed to ensuring that our um, shoppers are absolutely paid for the effort that they put in. And man, they put in a lot of effort into the shops. We pay, including tips, on average, we pay about $22 a shop and it takes about um, 45 minutes to do a shop. And if you were to take, a lot of people will automatically assume, well, that must be driven up by big urban areas like New York or LA or San Francisco. And that's not true. If you were to take out um, our, our uh, highest paying, call it 10 to 15 markets, that number still right around the high teens to low 20s. Wow. Okay. Including tip. Yeah. Okay, I think I have one more question. Um, uh, <laughs> what is the genesis of the name shipped? I don't know. I sort of say that was probably before your time, I would imagine. It was. It was. We'd have to talk to Bill Smith about that. But here's what I would say. Um, you know, when I joined Shipped, it, we had Shipped as the name. We had the spaceship as the logo. logo. Man, the spaceship is cool. Nobody loves a spaceship more than I do. But between the name and the logo, it did not necessarily really... Um, kind of support our business model or tell you what, what's the business we're in? What do we do? And so while we wanted to keep the name because there's so much um, value and um, importance of, of Shift being founded right here in Birmingham, we did change the logo to the shopping bag logo that you see now to really start to, to showcase. We are in the business of same day delivery of all of your shopping needs. And it made for a much more um, reflective logo of our business for in and a logo that can expand as our business model expands. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all the q and I have right now. And um, if anybody else has anything, get it to me quickly. Otherwise, we're going to wrap up. This has been just fantastic. And um, James, do you want to close this up? Certainly. Kelly, thank you so much for a dynamic presentation. Here at the Chamber, we uh, also thank you for your flexibility with your schedule. <laughs> and uh, lastly, we are excited that SHIP is headquartered in downtown Birmingham on 20th Street in one of the tallest buildings in the state of Alabama. Again, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This has been a pleasure. I appreciate it.
Well, we're grateful and glad you're here in Birmingham and uh, wish you all the best. And we would love for you to be part of our chamber also. We can't uh, miss asking that. <laughs> I do want to make one other quick announcement Then I want you to hear the thought of the day. Uh, it just goes exactly with what you've just shared with us. Our next meeting, um, we probably will do it on Zoom, but that's to, to be determined. Um, April 13th, we're honored to have Rosalind Houston with BBVA USA as our speaker. We too had her scheduled for last year and had to postpone. So we're grateful to be able to get these people, these speakers that we think are so dynamic and, and bring such value to our membership. And um, we, you'll be getting further information on that. Our thought for the day is leadership is not about being the best. Leadership is about making everyone else better. And I think that's exactly what we just heard Ms. Russo share with us. This is from Bridget Hyson. So thank you all for being on here. Thank you again, Ms. Russo. We appreciate your sharing your time with us and uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you everyone. Have a great day.